Your Royal Highnesses, Excellencies, Distinguished Heads of State and Government, Excellencies, dear partners and friends of the World Economic Forum, a very cordial welcome to the 2023 annual meeting. We are coming together under the motto, Cooperation in a Fragmented World. At the beginning of this year, we are confronted with unprecedented and multiple challenges. First, our global economy is undergoing deep transformation. The energy transition, the consequences of COVID, the reshaping of supply chains, are all serving as catalytic forces for the economic transformation. Oh, hello, Yahawa. Bashem Yarashai, Bashem Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of a great millstone who do rule well. Shalom to you of us who are hopeful. Shalom to the elect. Quick video for those of you in the know and more importantly for those of you in in the faith who haven't had a real chance to navigate the ins and outs of the uh, the ins and outs, so to speak, of the World Economic Forum's annual meeting about to be wrapped up in uh, Davos, Switzerland for this Gregorian calendar year. I believe the the motto for this year's summit was or is titled uh, Cooperation in a Fragmented World. The fact that the elite globalist attention is focused on a quote-unquote fragmented world, fragmented meaning broken or separated into distinct parts, and how these distinct parts really uh, different countries and essentially different nations of people, that's the first clue, can uh, cooperate, better yet assemble, i.e. from form a, a complete and cohesive functioning unit should scream to you what has easily been a uh, topic of discussion for us at least for the last 10, 15 years. At least that's what it feels like. Uh, the plans and groundwork being laid for the NWO and the one world dictatorship headed by the top banking families on the earth. I was watching Redacted on YouTube and their last live really did most of the legwork as far as what the elite had planned coming down the, the turnpike. I did some of my own digging and jotted down my own. Uh, own list based on that. Uh, let's get the scripture and, and we'll run through it right quick. Let's go to Luke, the 12th chapter, we'll start at uh, verse 2. And it reads, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Uh, therefore, what, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in light. Now, we know this was Yahweh Shai speaking in regard to the conduct of the Pharisees and the contradiction in outward appearances being kept up by most of the Pharisees at that time. Not all of them. Uh, really, Yahweh Shai was cautioning the flock to beware of, of the hypocrisy amongst those who, uh, as I said, um, you know, were living in that, uh, that contradiction of outward appearances. You know, the... Uh, open view they presented themselves to be the pinnacle of all righteousness but behind the scenes they were anything but their uh, doctrines far far uh, from matched the way they led their everyday lives uh, to be clear it wasn't so much the doctrine that Yahweh Shai had a, a problem with it was their practice in not keeping the laws including those they set now the Pharisees like the scribes were well known legal experts the uh, lawyers of that time if you will the other problem with them aforementioned was that they often put legal tradition of their fathers before what should be ascribed to and drawn from the set apart scriptures, essentially in the keeping of laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. A Pharisee in the Hebrew is uh, parashim, properly uh, parayashim, salakia, which means to scatter, to spread and disperse, pertaining to the word of the Most High Power, Yahweh. But instead of spreading and dispersing the truth of 
or the words of truth, Salakia, which is the light. The Pharisees gathered and hoarded the word to themselves. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. Simply put, nothing shall remain secret. Anything said and done behind the scenes will be revealed. The reason why I brought this out is because not only does this speak to the Israelites who know this truth, but put it in a napkin and bury it or hide it under their beds. Uh, Israelites prone and known to lean to their own understanding. It also speaks to the present day writers of the law, the self-righteous demons in government. Everything they prescribe is adverse to the law, statute, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. And if they're not outright concealing the laws, they pervert them in suiting their own needs to mislead the, sh the sheep. Uh, the same can be said in terms of what they do with their own laws, i.e. their uh, constitutions and their bill of rights, if you will. Whatever they don't like or pans out being counterproductive to their uh, own agendas, they find some way to circumvent it, to avoid adhering to it by vetoing it's uh, amending, stacking the deck, putting their finger on the scale, so to speak, and and or uh, buying or killing those they've appointed to preside over the uh, judicial process. Um, their hypocrisy is likened to uh, leaven in the way that it spreads. A little leaven does what? It leavens the whole lump. The same account in uh, Matthew 10 and 27 says this, uh, what I tell you in darkness that speak ye in light, and what ye hear in the air that preach ye upon the housetops, which goes to our teaching this truth first and foremost on the highways and hedges and doing these sit-downs and live lessons. Isaiah 58 says we are to cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people the transgression and the house of Jacob their sins, which begins with following the ways of the heathen, which the scriptures also warn us against in uh, Jeremiah Acts 5 and 29 is another good precept, which says we ought to obey Yahweh rather than men. Matthew 10 and 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now, for those of you in the no-no, uh, it is uh, common knowledge that the soul itself cannot perish. Okay, As each spirit is a part of the Most High Power, who is the Father of of spirits so we know the judgment being spoken of here is in reference to life as we know it here on earth hence the understanding that hell is not a place it is a condition hell is not some fiery place you burn forever and ever and ever while falling in the abyss or a bottomless pit what Yahawashai is saying here is to fear the one who can kill you in this life then judge you by making your life a living hell when you return in the next we through faith believe this is the last go around so that hell this time around speaks to eating a barbecued missile and then waking to shame and everlasting contempt not forever ever but forever is exactly how it's going to feel uh, ergo we are to talk loud about the ensuing judgments for not only you israelites but what will befall those who fight against righteousness and inflict these draconian laws and measures on your house people in the form of a system built for total control as of late several of the uh of the elders have been adamant in sending a message to mount seer i.e esau edom and his so-called white establishment and to be honest the sentiment of all you brothers should be nothing short of that ezekiel the uh, 35th chapter is the precept there uh, psalms 137 and 7 which proves king david was also a prophet says remember O lord yahweh the children of edom in the day of jerusalem i.e. we Israelites, uh, who said, raise it, raise it, speaking to Esau, Edom, of course, meaning erase it, scrape it, level it, burn it to the ground, if you will, uh, speaking to the uh, Roman captivity, but before that, uh, the destruction of Jerusalem during the Babylonian captivity, um, leading to, and again, to the next example, of course, Roman, the Roman captivity, leading to the great uh, diaspora, the scattering in 70 AD of we Israelites. First Ezra uh, 4 and 44 uh, speaks to the time period of um, uh, the destruction in Babylon. I believe the year was 587 BC. Incidentally, Elder Yashawamba from the Davos camp brought out that Davos means son of David. Remember, O Lord Yahweh, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it even to the foundation thereof. 
O daughter of Babylon, which we know speaks to America present day, who are to be destroyed. Happy shall he, that he being Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Now to stay on top of the rollout of these initiatives and policies by the global elite, the uh, top banking families of the earth today, and the contents of their said discussions constantly being held in seclusion has already been revealed to we hopeful elect. This showing at Davos is really a public offering, if you will. The attention we lend to it is what these globalists and the uh, technocrats want, uh, because it not only provides the data they need to help further police us, but it also are the ingredients and the necessary energy needed to practice their sorceries and their witchcraft, a stress, fear, and confusion uh, leading to chaos. The scriptures tell us, uh, Psalm 7 and 11, that Yahweh is angry with the wicked every day. You don't think these agendas being set in motion haven't been discussed already and are already happening? They're just letting you know now. But we watchmen have been uh, speaking about these things for a long time now. Pretty much begging you dry bones to repent, to wake up, get right in and put some skin in the game, so to speak, as a pardon the pun. Really, we can, you know, sit here and, and go back and forth about exact details, but there is no arguing that ultimately it comes down to Esau's plan for total control and domination over those who inhabit the earth, starting with we Israelites, of course, and the uh, elite's end goal of marking everybody not a part of the ruling class with a subdermal, subdermal meaning under the skin, uh, tracking device to prove ownership, maintaining and cementing the white establishment's desired system. That's the bare bones of it. The most important thing that we are commanded to bring to your awareness as the hopeful elect is that this is a spiritual battle taking place. One that the Heavenly Father, His Son, uh, the Celestial Army, of course, and we Israelites who are of the elect have already won. Now, all that being said, let's go through some of the panel discussions listed. You yourselves at home can find on the World Wide Web with a little research. Of course, there's a, a panel discussion on the CBDC, the central bank digital currency entitled In the Face of Fragility, which speaks to the elite's uh, control of the money supply, more or less, essentially policing how you and you spend and where you spend your hard-earned money. Uh, what is exactly uh, being discussed, the Salakia, according to the panel's directive anyways, is says this, over 100 nations are exploring central bank digital currency, CBDC, and each has a different motion for implementation, now exacerbated by geopolitical fragility and financial instability. What can we learn from countries that have implemented the CBDC solutions and can they provide resiliency in the face of global risk and the high inflation, low growth, high debt economy? And I believe that was a part of uh, clause cotton swabs or opening spiel. Sure they can, if they take what they've learned, unite forces, rally up the troops, uh, threaten to starve or imprison you if you don't inject your, or their digitally embedded bullshit in your arm. Nothing to see here, really. Revelation 13, verse 16 through 18 is the precept being spoken of. Uh, no coincidence, the panel is being held on today's date, the 18th, for those who have eyes to see. Uh, then there's a panel entitled Deglobalization or Reglobalization, which essentially means a new world order, simply put. Then there's a, a panel discussion called The Clear and Present Danger of Disinformation, i.e. how to successfully censor the truth is what it should be called. Dis disinformation because it doesn't fall in line with the narratives being sown by the higher ups. Special attention to be given to we Hebrew Israelites, of course, who have made it a full-time job of constantly shining a light on Esau's gifted brand of uh, deception. Isaiah 29 and 15 comes to mind there. It says, uh, it says this, Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from Yahweh, and their works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us and who knoweth us? Speaking to the hidden counsel of the wicked, Job 9 and 24, Malachi 1 and 4 being the precepts there. Uh, Israelite 101 proving who the na nation of Esau Edom is in the world today. We know them to be the elite globalists and the international bankers who make up the Illuminati, the uh, 
the men who rule this world behind the scenes, as well as their operatives, their gatekeepers, their uh, handlers, and their minions. Uh, Job 22 and 13 says this in response. And thou sayest, how doth Yahweh know, the thou again being Esau, Edom, can be, Salakia, can he judge through the dark cloud? Uh, the answer to that is an emphatic yes. Uh, thick clouds are recovering to him that he seeth not, and he walketh in the circuit of heaven. Speaking to the clouds covering the chariots, the uh, instruments of Esau's ensuing judgment for all the atrocities and the wickedness he's carried out on the earth. For her sins have reached heaven, and Yahweh has remembered Babylon's iniquities. Loosely uh, paraphrasing Revelation, the 18th chapter. Another uh, panel discussion is, <laughs> wait for it, ready for brain transparency. Double talk for uh, mind control. What struck me about this uh, panel, besides the obvious in it, also speaking to Revelation 13 and 16 on down, which everybody in the face should already know by heart, by the way, is the hypocrisy. Now imagine a four-day summit being held by our supposed global leaders discussing policies surrounding how they plan to rule over us and how we should live out the rest of our days but won't allow independent media the uh, operative word being independent uh, meaning sponsored and solicited by the people never mind the people themselves to uh, sit in on the conversation these global leaders they speak transparency but won't allow you to chime in on the issues that truly affect you what most of these discussions are about is making sure the body politic doesn't affect their proposed system of control and their effectiveness in instituting the mechanisms they are uh, looking forward and implementing to rule over us. That is the end and short of it. The scriptures say, Proverbs 29 and 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. These elite devils could care less what ails you. The only time they show interest, i.e. throw money at it as if it suits their directives. And then there's uh, why we need battery passports, which speaks to a component they are hoping to add to electric vehicles that they've been pushing on the masses as of late that supports a real-time monitoring service. Essentially, it's a tracking system. So not only do they want to track you with the um, RFID, CHIP, which we know is the MOTB, they want to police the, the means of your transportation. Another directive I had to point out was the sports and industry and society panel, which I'm not going to go into other than to say it should have been entitled More Breads and Circuses, Entertainment, the Ultimate Distraction. And then here you have another panel, this time headed by the uh, CEO of Pfizer, alongside former Prime Minister of Britain, Tony Blair, Mr. Iraqi One Million, and and others leading an inquiry discussion on the ability to produce the Maxine Faster. The name of the uh, panel is 100 Days to Outrace the Next Pandemic. There really is no need to go further into that considering we were the actual lab rats. They've already did most of their testing on via the lockdown and the past planned pandemic. We know this will lead to, again, the MOTB, the mark of the beast. The beast they are hoping to mark is you. Uh, honorable mentions go to the uh, mapping of Russia's economic trajectory, i.e. the strength and stability of Russia's ec economy panel. Uh, Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, comes to mind there. Alongside the uh, another panel, um, the introducing Ukraine's peace form formula panel, which the hosts of Redacted titled Warmongering and Peace with Weapons, and I, I have to agree on that. I would add, though, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3. Um, we'll start at 2. And it says this, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as the thief in the night, uh, speaking to the turn of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to deliver Israel and recompense her enemies for their many abominations and evil acts against we Israelites, starting with the elect and the Heavenly Father. If your eyes are open, then you won't get caught off guard. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. Uh, clear to see this idea of peace. Peace talks and uh, resolutions are being used by the elites to pacify the masses so they can finally implement their plans for the NWO. The call to stabilize a fragmented world, hence the uh, latest summit, is also a call for peace. Government mandates, particularly one for vaccination, is another 
example. But when uh, Esau attempts to feed his belly, Job 20 and 15 throughout his one precept, his ultimate plot will be foiled. Okay, Then sudden destruction cometh for those who are what? Not in this truth. The living dead out here won't know what to make of their forthcoming judgment. That's clear. If you really want to speak about clear and present danger. Uh, chariots, lasers, and missiles. Oh my. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Going uh, back to our verse 2, of course, Yahweh Shai will return like a thief in the night. Second Peter uh, 3 and uh, 10 is another good precept. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. We are not of darkness. We are the children of light because we have this truth. The same truth that exposes other truths like the uh, many devices of Deception being utilized by the global elitists. If you are clueless to what's about to go down, you are in complete darkness. You are fast asleep. Uh, therefore, let us sleep at Salakia. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Ergo, don't let Esau eat him intoxicate you with his wicked philosophies, first and foremost. And secondly, there is no shortcut to salvation. A brother of mine who passed away, we still always say shortcuts draw blood. So don't let these baggage claim Israelites who have clearly sold out distort the doctrine or the gospel, i.e. the good news that we have a savior, a deliverer, and redeemer in Yahweh Shai. It's to point, it's uh, really it's to the point now where some of you brothers have lost your way and you find the Lord's judgments hard to digest and truth uneasy to receive, playing the role of the Pharisees present day. Uh, to be sober means to be of clear mind, of course, to keep in and rely on a sound doctrine, to have an understanding of these parables and dark sayings even, which are gifts of faith given to you from on high. So here you have a global forum detailing the plans to weaponize medicine, uh, discussions on how to fast track bioterrorism, uh, plots and theories on how to further push the effects of uh, climate change down your throat, the details surrounding the tracking of people and plans to implement a digitized money system, essentially a one world global currency. These are things that are, it's nothing new to we brothers in the truth and a few sisters listening and learning and certainly nothing new to Yahweh's elect. So stay strong Israel, stay circumspect, fast and pray, pray without ceasing. We are almost home. Call Halal Yahweh Bashem Yahushai Bashem Rakak Wadash through the power and spirit. I hope you were edified. Double honors unto the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who do teach us 100% truth and rule well. Citations to the hopeful elect. Remember, no test, no yab, and damn sure. Don't take that C to the H to the I to the Pizzle. Shalom, Yasharala. Shalom to the elect. Hey.